Now, I want to show you guys exactly what I mean when I say it doesn't matter where in the UK you are, you can run a rent-to-rent -rent business. It doesn't matter how much experience you have. So I live in the middle of nowhere in a tiny, tiny, tiny little town, North Dorset, called Stallbridge. And I started with rent-to-rent -rent HMO, okay? So this is where I live, in a tiny little town. So the nearest city suitable for rent-to-rent -rent HMO is probably Bristol and Bournemouth. Bournemouth is a dead zone. Right, in terms of rent-to-rent, -rent, you're not going to get any results with HMO. At all. Actually, in fact, I don't know anybody that has a rent to rent HMO in Bournemouth. Bristol was a very competitive market. I'm not saying it didn't work. I went on many viewings. It's just I secured my first batch of deals in Brighton. But then I stopped focusing on Bristol and mainly scaled my rent to rent HMO business in Brighton. But my point being is it doesn't matter where in the UK you are. If you want to start a rent to rent HMO business or service accommodation business, look at where you are. Are you in the middle of nowhere? You might be. Who cares? Make it work. Okay, so how exactly do you make it work? It's just a few tips from me that I would advise you look at when you're you're just starting out. Doesn't matter where in the UK you are. Like I'm very southwest, it doesn't really matter. It depends on how bad you want the lifestyle change. Are you willing to do the work? Can you travel? So this is what I would suggest you guys do. Have an agent's response data sheet and at the bottom have separate tabs for different locations. So let's say tab number one is Bristol. Every estate agent and landlord you call populate the data. So landlord or estate agent name. Who did you speak to? When? What did they respond with? Green, amber, red in terms of like, were they good? Was it, I don't really know. Bad, red. And when you put that data in, you want to be calling back about three weeks later. So fast forward like six weeks of doing that for different locations your spreadsheet is going to be pretty well populated and opposed to opening right move and gumtree and these different platforms every day you open up your agent response data so week number one allocate to tab number one right and call all of the agents back through that is green and amber so you'll be calling them up quite regularly but every three weeks is the go-to so hey jack yeah you know it's kenny again just calling up called you a few weeks ago you said you had nothing on your books i'm just wondering if you have any new properties available oh hey kenny like they boom do that four or five times they're really starting to see how proactive you are they'll almost be expecting your call and start to introduce a bit of your personality into it like you know i've called you three times now and you still haven't given me anything and then week number two go to tab number two week number three go to tab number three and then back to tab one. So that's just one piece of advice I'd give you at the start of your rent to rent journey. Second piece of advice I'd give you is have a three hour radius for rent to rent HMO, an hour and a half max for service accommodation. SA is more hands on at the start of the journey until you systemize and get all of the automations in place, you will be required to you know go to the property more often than HMO. HMO, I would say you can systemize straight from the bat and you can take on a property anywhere in the UK as as a newbie but for peace of mind that like, you can get to that property and back in one day have a radius of three hours with that radius in mind that will be enough estate agents to keep you busy like when people say oh, i've run out of estate agents to call i'm just like okay how big is your radius you definitely have not made all of the calls in one week there's thousands of estate agents in an hour and a half radius there's definitely you have not called them all third tip i'll give you guys is if you've got one viewing and it's a two hour drive together try and secure another viewing with another agent in that area on the same day to make it worth your while. If you really don't want to do that drive just for one viewing, you know, you need to book it as annual leave. You have to give it so much advance. You're running out of annual leave. Here's what I would suggest you do. Ask yourself, is it worth the while driving all that distance just for one viewing? If not, make an offer subject to physical viewing. You don't know how that agent is going to respond to your offer. You know, if you drive there two hours, you view the property, you come all the way back, you make an offer and boom, it's rejected straight away after you book the day off of annual leave. You've got Gone through all of that effort to do your due diligence ahead of the viewing to then submit the offer and then straight away reject it so what you can do if it is a bit of a trek to go and view that property make an offer subject to physical viewing so do your due diligence before you actually submit this offer send it over in an email and just say look i appreciate i haven't come to view the property but this is what i can offer if it's something that the landlord would consider then i'd make it a top priority to come and actually see the property if you haven't downloaded my cheat sheet on how to accelerate your journey go to the description of this video and click that cheat sheet download it all it is is your name and your email and it's a 12 page document on how to start to beat the competition in this game so these are just a few tips to really help you accelerate your journey and give you a clear plan of okay so i'm in the middle of nowhere how do i scale a rent to rent business all right so i hope these tips have been helpful let me know in the comments if they are and i'll see you on the next video take care